it's great to be connected with you in this way. If you want to leave any comments after this video, get in touch personally. It will be great to hear from you wherever you are. Welcome to this broadcast. Today we think about the cross. Let's pray. God, we thank you for waking us this day, for lighting the sky and giving us light. In a world where many are hungry, we thank you for the food available to us. In a world where many are lonely, we thank you for the connections open to us in faith. In a world where many are oppressed, we thank you for the freedom you bring. You send your light into the world to coax all living things out of darkness. You draw us gently towards the light to learn to live in your love. In the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. cross today as the best known symbol of Christianity. For the cross, we Christians are known. 
What does it mean to us? As we show it everywhere. How do you explain the cross to non-Christians? We need to find the words and deeds to share our faith. We are not alone in needing to explain. Also, the people around the Apostle Paul find it hard to understand the message of the cross. For the message about Christ's death on the cross is nonsense to those who are being lost, but for us who are being saved, it is God's power. Jews want miracles for proof and Greeks look for wisdom. As for us, we proclaim the crucified Christ, a message that is offensive to the Jews and nonsense to the Gentiles. But for those whom God has called, both Jews and Gentiles, this message is Christ, who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For what seems to be God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and what seems to be God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The Abolemno Cross from Angus in Scotland is one of the finest examples of picture sculpture and it probably is from the year 685. It shows interlaced seahorses, birds and beasts as a backdrop for an intricately interlaced cross with three Celtic knots in the shaft. This cross is from the first years of Christianity in Scotland. The wildlife motifs may be totem symbols, referring to old beliefs. The legend says that Patrick in Ireland combined the cross symbol of Christianity with a radiant sun to give pagan followers an idea of the importance of the cross. The life-giving properties of the sun are stronger still in the cross. Even in the dark, the cross gives life. Pagan thinking served as a help to understand the cross. Life-giving it is. The cross and tattoos are very popular here. Next to this cross is written, Thy will be done. And I complete, Thy will be done, not mine. This is remembering Jesus' way to his execution. When Jesus cries and prays, knowing his murders are on the way, struggling to face the impending brutality of the cross. In this picture, who knows what this person is feeling like? For that person, God's will is preferable over their own. The cross is protecting the vain. They came to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John with him. Distress and anguish came over him, and he said to them, The sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch. He went a little further on, threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if possible, he might not have to go through that time of suffering. Father, he prayed, my father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. The Hill of Crosses is a site of pilgrimage in northern Lithuania. It started when crosses were placed on a former hill fort after the patriotic uprising of 1831 against the Russian Empire. Over time, not only crosses, but giant crucifixes and ells have been brought here by pilgrims. In the year 1918, when Lithuania once again declared its independence, again Lithuanians went to pray on the Hill of Crosses. Under the crosses, they prayed for peace, for the country, and for the fallen of the wars of independence. During the years 1944 till 1990, when Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union, people continued traveling to the hill, leaving their tributes, making the Hill of Crosses a venue of peaceful resistance. 
Although the Soviets worked hard to remove new crosses, and they bulldozed the site at least three times. As a response, ever more crosses appeared, brought by the people. In 2006, there were around 100,000 crosses. The cross, a symbol of peace, of identity and of faith. A stubborn sign of hope. The large majority of the people of Ukraine are Christians in the Orthodox tradition of Christianity. It is a tradition that in some ways looks very different to our Reformed tradition in Scotland. Orthodox can be full of ornate pictures and symbols. Reformed can be very undecorated and plain. But of course the Christian faith is fully shared in both. When you look at this cross of blessing, you notice the diagonal line in the lower third of the cross? This line is for us to remember that Jesus was crucified between two criminals, one on each side. One cursed Jesus, and the other criminal asked Jesus to remember him when he was coming as a king, and Jesus promised him to be in paradise with him that day. The Ukrainian Orthodox cross reminds us that us humans are full of wrongdoing and violence, but whoever, even at the last minute, asks Jesus for forgiveness, will be forgiven and enter heaven. The Ukrainian Orthodox Cross is highlighting forgiveness. Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they're doing. One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right, because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. In Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum in Glasgow, you can find this. Christ of St John of the Cross is a painting by Salvador Dali made in 1951. This picture was Scotland's favourite painting in the year 2006. It shows Jesus Christ on the cross in a darkened sky, floating over a body of water, complete with a boat and fishermen. There are no nails, no blood, and no crown of thorns, because according to Dali, a dream told him these features would mar his depiction of Christ. The composition of Christ is also based on a triangle, formed by Christ's arms. The triangle, since it has three sides, can be seen as a reference to the Trinity, meaning not simply the person of Jesus, but God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. All three aspects of our God are fully there on the cross as Jesus suffers. God suffers. Dali says this image in his dream represented the nucleus of the atom. Dali depicted the very unity of the universe, the Christ. So this cross shows the unity of God. The cross is the unity of the universe. And here the view a painting by the German Max Beckmann. It was created in the year 1919 and it is called Descent from the Cross. 
It is showing the dead body of Christ taken down from the cross. The artist Beckman had gone enthusiastically into the battle of the First World War, wanting to be a hero, but he witnessed how vile and evil and horrific war really was, and his world collapsed. Max Beckman was so damaged by the death and atrocity he witnessed. Only the story of the Christ gave him the means to recover and then to vehemently criticise war and the power games behind it. This painting reflects what some of us too have witnessed. And the cross then is a way to express the unspeakable, a way to seek healing. This oil painting is called Heralds of the Resurrection. It was created in the year 1867 by the French-Russian painter Nikolai Gay. Soldiers shrouded in darkness slink away from a discarded broken cross. Their purpose is done. In contrast, the sky and the angel both throb with life but they fail to light up the faces of the soldiers or the dark fortress at the right of the picture. Here are heralds only, not the real thing. What we see here is only just the beginning. The cross is a symbol of the old, the old that has been overcome. The new is to emerge, and this is the new creation Paul is on about in his letter. Anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making all human beings his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins, and he has given us the message which tells us how he makes them his friends. In the face of this risen Christ by Ambrogio de Stefano Borgognone, we see lively eyes. This painting from Italy is 520 years old, and yet it is very much alive. The eyes of this risen Christ are sad, looking through and past the viewer. They are the eyes of someone who is somewhere else, in some way. These eyes have seen things the living have not seen. They are disquieting. The God who became man, the Jesus who is God, as shown here, has overcome the brutality humans inflict on each other. And in going through and beyond, he is bringing us new life. Christ has entered his glory. Christ has cleared our way into glory. On the cross, the cross has turned into a banner of victory. The cross flag is not the flag of a particular nation. It is the flag of the resurrection, of Christ's victory over everything that makes for death. The cross here is a sign of victory over death. And so in our Scottish Reformed tradition of the Christian faith, the cross is empty because Christ has been taken down from it. Christ has overcome it. Christ has the victory over the cross. In our tradition, the empty cross reminds us we are the community of the risen Lord. We get our hope from the resurrected one. We shall live as a changed and risen people. And it is in the power of the resurrection, through the Spirit, that the church lives. The Apostle Paul writes, 
I passed on to you what I received, which is of the greatest importance, that Christ died for our sins, as is written in the scriptures, that he, is, he was buried and that he was raised to life three days later, as written in the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter and then to all twelve apostles. Then he appeared to more than 500 of his followers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared, appeared to James, and afterward to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared also to me, even though I am like someone whose birth was abnormal. Death is destroyed. Victory is complete. Where death is your victory? Where death is your power to hurt? Death gets its power to hurt from sin, and sin gets its power to from the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, dear friends, stand firmly and steady. Keep busy always in the work for the Lord, since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever useless. We have been through a lot of countries and we have found the cross in so many versions, each telling the story and highlighting an aspect. But pictures have taken us through the story of the cross. And now we are back home and we shall tell others of the cross. The empty cross is pointing to the resurrection, to hope and victory over death and all sin. And yet it acknowledges the deep suffering of Christ in this world. God with us and for us. The Celtic cross reminds us God's love is life giving us the sun, overcoming hate by the power of God's love, ending all darkness. And the cross is forgiveness and strength for us all. It shall be a symbol of peace, of identity, of faith, of hope and sacrifice. The cross shall be our sign of life, triumphant over all odds we face. Amen.
let's pray together. Lord of the cross, we bring you our prayers for the needs of the world. There are many who need our prayers and much that we need to pray for. Our world is a world of violence, of pain, of suffering, but also a world of joy, of beauty and of new and renewed life. Bring peace to war-torn lands, free the oppressed, satisfy the hungry and bring justice to us all, though the cost to us personally might be great and challenge us that we may play our part in bringing in your kingdom. We pray for the world, for peace and progress in Ukraine and for people and countries suffering around the world as a result of price rises and shortages. We pray for other countries where there is conflict and places suffering most from climate change. We thank you, God, for all who try to make a difference for good. Bless your people, O Lord. We pray for our own country, for government and opposition in Edinburgh and London, for all who are engaged in politics at a local level. In time of growing crisis, we seek your guidance for decisions to be made and your blessing on our nation. We pray for our church, for those who seek to guide us nationally and locally and for our own congregations. We give thanks for the many who faithfully worshipped through the years, who've passed on to us the good news, which we in turn must pass on to others. We pray for those who encourage us in our faith, Guide and bless us as we seek to be your people where we are. So we pray also for our friends and neighbours. We thank you for all who bring light and laughter into our lives. May we also be a blessing to those around us. We pray for any who are suffering this day, for those who are in pain or who are worried, for those afraid or lonely or sorrowful. May you come near to them now with your healing power. In the quiet, we name before you those known to us. Lord of the cross, may your kingdom come soon. Amen.
we have made time to think about God and worship our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered the cross for us and overcame it. And now we too go into this world to love and serve our Lord Jesus and the way he served us. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those around you, now and forevermore. Amen.